Hey everyone, this is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. Today we're gonna cover a sales query mixing credit notes and invoices in the same query using a union all statement or function. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's me, your friendly SAP Business One consultant. Uh, I won't bug you too much with this whole support thing, so just check out the link in the description, supportme.battleshipcobra.com. I just wanted to thank everyone so much, uh, so many new subscribers. I am so glad people are getting stuff out of my videos. Remember, if you have any comments or any uh, suggestions for videos, just Post them below, like, subscribe, and share with a consultant friend that you know and uh, get them to subscribe. That really helps me a lot. <clears throat> so again, today we're gonna do a new query type that you might not have done before. It's highly requested. And uh, we're mixing invoices with credit notes and using a date parameter as well in there. So here we go. Okay, so today we are going to be making this query. I'm not gonna spend a heck of a lot of time writing it by hand, but I'm just gonna show you kind of what's happening, why I use these particular columns, then I'm gonna just give you this code so you can learn from it. So let's do the whole thing here. So you can see I've run it here and I can enter a date parameter and I get some invoices and some credits. So this is kind of curious, right? Because previously you are just writing queries and you would either pull from OINV or uh, credit notes ORIN. But in this case you're getting a whole bunch of mixed stuff and you're also getting subtotals with negatives for credits in order for you to add things up. And I just added these null spaces here. So you have uh, Canadian or US, I'm in Canada, so uh, this could be US and another currency. Um, and then you also have the address of this customer or these customers here. So how did I do that? Um, if you've watched my other if you watch my other query tutorials, you basically just go in here, view, system information, and you can see at the bottom left corner, OINV. So OINV is the header record. So you go ahead and you're going to add, let me see what order I did this in, OINV first. So you add OINV then you want to add your customers there so you can see one trick here is if it's bold you can just click and drag it here but uh, if you were going through here in a business partner and you hold your mouse over there you say OCRD uh, you could just go OCRD in there tab and you'll see that it links it it interjoins it there right for you in the query The other thing I wanted is the address. So I want these specific things in here. I don't want people to be overriding the address because it's impossible for me to analyze them based on region or country or whatever. If it's just overwritten, it'll just be a string. So I wanna get this specific information here. So I see it's INV12. Okay, and it'll do the link there. So there's always an INV, there's always an INV12 for every doc entry on an OINV, so all these inner joins are fine. So then I just go through and I I already know kind of what I what I need to do and what I want to do. So let's just look into this a little bit uh, more closely. 
So because of the way SAP does the dates, this is the best way that I have found. I have no clue where I got this or who gave me this code, but it was probably off the forums. So you just want to put this at the top and it declares these dates as a start and a finish date and then it allows you to select them using this uh, this series here. So I'm I'm not really going to go into that too much more, but if you literally just put these as part of the doc date between parameter and parameter. Um, you can try that, but it's going to give you issues. It's going to give you issues where if the if there isn't an invoice on the date that you were selecting, then it just won't show any data. So you kind of have to hack it like this and just trust me, do it this way. And we're going to use these uh, parameters here in both the invoice and also for the credit note. So here we have a type. So I'm literally just putting this as a string. I'm gonna give it a column name. It needs a column name as type. Doc date is straightforward. Doc number is straightforward. Card code, card name, currency, straightforward null. This is just a blank column. Now what I want is the subtotal. So unfortunately there's no field for subtotal in the document. So I'm gonna take the document total, which is the final total, plus your discount, plus your down payment amount, minus your total expenses and minus tax. This will give you the raw subtotal. Then I want to see what the total expenses, the freight and the VAT sum, and then I wanted the doc total. And I've given each row, each column its name here so that it's clear. Then I get a null, which is just a blank column, and you can remove this or edit this however you want. And then I'm going to do the foreign currency in the same. Then I'm going to do a column. Then what I'm going to do is say, and this is a this is a column that you may not know about. If the ship to has been overwritten, it'll say yes. So you can filter out those ones or go and uh, interpret them however you want in Excel or whatever you're going to be doing with them. So again, you would want to block this and you can block this on a stored procedure. Um, if you leave a comment below, uh, maybe I'll do, well for sure at some point I'm going to do a, a transaction notification blocking um, video, but if you want that particular video just let me know. So you can block this if anybody tries to override it, you don't need to do it. Maybe in the case of um, drop shipments you might want to, but other than that you shouldn't really use it. Okay, um, but you could always check, you know, if there are rows with uh, drop ships and then allow it through automatically. So maybe that'll be, a, that's a good topic for another video. Then all I'm doing is I'm basically saying, okay, use coalesce. Uh, so coalesce is just means if what I'm trying to pull is null, use the other thing. So this will say if INV 12 is blank because somebody didn't do it properly or left it blank, then use the default from the customer from T1, which will be less less accurate, but still at least it gives you some idea. So street number, so this is address line two, city, so this is your city. If the actual document doesn't have a specific city, use the default city from the customer. You don't have to do this, I just find this is a more complete way to do it. I would say most of the time, depending on who you are and what your business is, your um, ship to on the document should be this similar or the same to the ship to on um, your specific customer. So these are all of the columns that we have here. I put them in there. So usually what I'll do is I'll go through here and I'll just pull the columns that I need. So doc num type canceled. Um, we're going to go doc date, card code, card name, all those things in here. I'm not going to go through every single one and add all those, then we're going to execute it, then we can just copy these and uh, paste them in here and then I'll go about formatting them. So when I'm formatting them, I'll just basically do it this way 
and you know go through some of them I'm going to use for the where clause and stuff but uh, for right now I'm just basically going to take the fields that I need strip out things that I don't care about I, I don't really need all that stuff inner join this on that and inner join this on that so this you can see this really clear carefully makes my uh, start of my specific query and this will work fine but this doesn't have a couple things so what we want is we need a where clause where so we'll say doc type equals I and canceled equals no because you don't want the canceled documents I just wanted to illustrate the union query so we're gonna say union all and I just wanted to illustrate the union query so I'm gonna say union all and then basically you can just take this same query paste it here and then we can go back and look at credit memos hold your mouse over one of the fields and you can see it's O R I N in the bottom left hand corner there that's the table so all I really have to do is go O R I N and then I'm gonna go R I N 12 and this is literally going to give me it's gonna run it for the invoices and it's gonna run it for the credit notes. But the thing you have to remember is it has to have the exact same structure and data types for all the columns. And um, you could do differences and calculate differences as long as the end column is the same. So this is how it allows me to link these all together. And the nice thing is I could just put negative total and then that'll give me a negative doc total there. And um, just to make things easier, I'm going to add, like I said, that, that layer there. So I'm going to do a string. So I'm going to say invoice as type. I don't even need the things there. And then just to make sure this matches, I'm going to go credit. Okay. So the column uh, header labels are going to come all from the first query. So you don't need to do them in the secondary but usually I do because these sometimes get so complicated that you just forget. You know, you have all these calculations. It's, it's sometimes easier just to put them in both even though it's not necessary. So I'm gonna copy that, go here, paste, and we should get a big list of things like this. Credit, 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 with negatives. Okay, so jumping back to my query, you can see pretty pretty clearly now that you've un the unions there, credit, these document types, then I have the coalesce there from. So the last thing we really need to talk about is the is the date ranges. So again, these uh, these variables have been set here, date one, date two, and you can look here. It says doc date between date one and date two. That's really easy and doc date between date one and day two. So it's really super easy. And now you have a query. I'm just gonna run the 010 2013 because this is a demo database and it doesn't really have too much data in it. And now you can see, here you go. You can add these up. Control click will give you a total there. Control click, control click, click, whatever. Oh, there's zero in there. Um, a new thing from the newer versions of SAP Business One 2 is you can right click, copy the table and paste this right into Excel. So you don't need to like export this out to Excel and then open it. To right click, copy table, this will paste it right into Excel. So that's it for my sales query. I'm definitely gonna put it in the uh, description below and that's pretty much it for now. Well, wasn't that fun? I hope you guys got a lot out of that video. I hope you can make your own sales queries now with a date parameter. I'm so glad you stuck around. Thank you so much to my sapiens. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, liking, and all that jazz. Remember to go to supportme.battleshipcobra.com with all the information. Link is in the description below. And I just wanted to say to you guys, you can do anything you want. Uh, with persistence, make sure that you stick to something. Don't quit and you can do it. That's the key to everything. And I just wanted to read this quote. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. 
Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Calvin Coolidge. Thank you again so much for everything, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.